in the spring and summer of 2016, something amazing happened at the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation in North Dakota. People from all walks of life, young, old, divergent worldviews and religions, hundreds of native tribes, people from all over America and all around the world came together to stand with Standing Rock. Some people knew what the fight against a pipeline company could look like. But most had no idea what to expect from Energy Transfer Partners, the Dakota Access Pipeline, and their workers, or North Dakota's government, and Morton County's law enforcement. They were in for a shock. People banded together in the chaos, out of necessity, protection, and grief. They held tighter, prayed harder, and vowed to stand for the water and the land against all odds. The call was sent out to all water protectors. Come, stand with us. And finally, the veterans came to answer the calling to protect Miniwachoni and the water protectors at the camp. The camps began to swell. Thousands made their way to North Dakota. Just as the vets arrived on scene, the Army Corps denied the easement to drill under Lake Oahe, and the camps erupted in celebration. That celebration did not last. A brutal North Dakota blizzard hit, and thousands of people became stranded. Driving conditions were deadly, and evacuating was next to impossible. Hundreds huddled in the pavilion of the nearby casino to wait the weather emergency out. For one family, this emergency turned into a tragedy. A tragedy in which Kathleen Bennett was falsely accused, imprisoned, and separated from her elderly mother and her family. Tell me your name. Kathleen. Kat. And your tribe? Um, Ogallala, Lakota, and Pine Ridge. Tell me a little bit of your history that you just told me. Um, about who you were related to and your great-grandmother. Oh, my grandfather's Red Cloud. Uh, my great-grandmother was a survivor of Wounded Knee Massacre. Um, Russell Means is my mom's first cousin. And Billy Mills is also my mom's first cousin. He was a track star in the Olympics. I met him. You did? Yes. Yeah, I did. Uh -huh. And um, um, I was just telling her a little bit how, how everything means something to us. The TP. culture. The TP is uh, inside the TP is like the womb. So did you get a name for the person that you reported this um, condition of the elder abuse to yeah, in this? Yeah, Gloria Blackshaw was the uh, veterans for Standing Rock coordinator that we were dropping all that stuff off to. What's the story with her? Know, as far as I know, later on, she had a falling out with the veterans for Standing Rock organization, and then she tried to go off on her own, and then the camp elders asked her to leave camp because she dropped the ball on a lot of other stuff. 
From the January 3, 2017 report of Jay Grubel and Josh Sellies, deputies for the Morton County Sheriff's Department. On December 20, 2016, I spoke to Bill Running Fisher, who owns Eagle Child Consulting and Enforcement Services. It was Running Fisher orchestrated the removal of Mary from the camp and the transport by ambulance to the emergency room. Running Fisher told me he had two encounters with Mary. The first was on December 6, 2016, when he was on the Ochetti Sakoan camp helping with the removal of protesters. I made entry into the tent and I found Mary Trujillo in the zip tie, both of her arms to a chair. She just had on a sweater, no pants on, no diaper. She'd been throwing herself, looked like a, a while. Mm -hmm. She had a big pile of excrement and urine that she was just sitting in. Okay, any rate, though, so upon entry into the tent, like I said, we found her, her arms zip tied to a uh, camp chair. Her fingers and stuff like that were taped with feces. She's over 80 years old, very disheveled, covered in feces and urine from the waist down. She had a pile of feces and urine in the chair itself that had dribbled down on the floor. Her fingers and stuff like that were taped with feces. All she had on was a sweater, but the sweater was the only article of clothing she had on. No socks, no shoes, no pants, no blanket covering her, nothing. She kept asking us for help, you know, and crying out in a, a tribal language, which I'm not familiar with. I wasn't familiar with what she was trying to say. Uh, as, soon, as soon as I made entry into there, I seen that I immediately, I'm the one that cut her out of the bonds, and I started assessing her uh, medical condition. Getting a basic set of vitals, I also called immediately that we needed an ambulance over there because she had to be out of there on an immediate transport. Uh, myself and another medic, and then we called for the ambulance to come over there as well that was based in the camp. Uh, the whole time took probably about 15 minutes altogether to assess her, get her loaded onto a journey real quick and get her out of there. Uh, five minutes after we got her outside of the tent structure itself, it collapsed under the weight of the snow and the wind. Mm -hmm. So we got loaded up into a journey to be evacuated first to the, uh, what they call it, Prairie Nights Casino, which we're using as a staging area for there. She's going to be sent on to an area hospital because she needed a way better level of care than we could obviously provide there as, as a medic. From the January 3rd report of Jay Grubel and Josh Sellies, deputies for the Morton County Sheriff's Department, there was a woman's advocate in the camp who is also assisting as a medic by the name of Mulaney Stoneman. She said that she'd become acquainted with Mary and Kathleen after being called to the Tarpy for a medical call in late November. She determined that Mary needed to go to the hospital and arranged transportation to the Standing Rock Hospital. Are you part of the medic uh, group? Uh, yes. And I'm a medic and they targeted us. Are you are you a are you a, a registered nurse, a trained midwife, a, a natural healer? What what kind of background do you hail from? Um, we're just you know I I don't know we don't we don't have we don't have that. You you don't have any, do you have any do you personally I mean have any particular background uh, like a nurse or uh, a medic uh, something like that no okay and what was your impression of uh, uh, this Kathleen and uh, how she was caring for her mom when you first encountered them it, it seemed like um, she had everything under you know under control. When did you, I guess, when the, when did you first notice signs of abuse? Was it the... the I, would, I would say the very, the very first time that I, that I had an, uh, the very first time I met her. I didn't know really what the situation was. You know, everything is accusations. I never seen anything like, um, you know, her being, you know, her being, uh, what what tied to the tied to the chair? We all had a feeling something was going on, but we I, I couldn't really see it. And I used to go and do what we would call welfare checks. Well, of course she was fine on December sixth. I didn't see her. I didn't see any other kind of indication that anything was wrong with her on on December sixth. I checked on 
I checked on Kathleen back there uh, two times. Kathy, Kathleen, and, and and Mary. I checked on uh, checked on them two times at the casino. Yeah, yeah. And they were doing okay. Uh huh. They were. They were. They were. They weren't fine. Nobody, nobody ever told me that she was hypothermic or that there was anything, you know, anything, anything wrong. From the January 3rd report of Jay Grubel and Josh Sellies, deputies for the Morton County Sheriff's Department. Running Fisher told me on December 17, 2016, he was again in the Ochetisekoan camp going from tent to tent, checking on the people, when he again found Mary in a different teepee. Running Fisher told me at this time Mary was huddled in a sleeping bag. Running Fisher told me that the teepee was cold and he was concerned for Mary's health and well-being. Running Fisher made arrangements to have Mary transported to the emergency room. Bill tells me that uh, this whole thing is recorded on a 911 call too. Can you explain all that? When we get, you know, when, 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 we get, when we get there, we went directly over there. I knocked. I knocked on the door. I entered. Um, I had entered, and I'm not sure if Bill and them were there previously to me being there. Mm -hmm. But when I got there, me and Christine and Bill were in there, and I had told her that um, we need we need we come to check on we come to check on Mary, mm -hmm. and she was really agitated. She was really upset that that we were there, okay. and she didn't. Um, she wasn't very cooper cooperative, okay. and she we told her that um, we needed to take her to the hospital, and she didn't like that thought. She she says no, no, you guys aren't taking you're not taking my mother to the hospital. No, this is my mother. You're not you're not going to do anything with her. This is my mom, mm -hmm. and then she proceeded to dial nine one one, saying over the phone that. Um, these people are trying to kidnap my mother. Uh, these people are trying to um, take take my mom. Um, I want somebody out here. I need I need help. All right. All right. Here we are. About to enter the hospital where they are holding my grandmother. I don't want to say too much, but we'll see how they react to me being here. I'm here to basically get some information. Earlier I was removed. Okay. Um, on my grandmother, we wanted to basically see the documentation that this lady's claiming she has, the legal guardianship she acquired today, apparently. Okay. And I need the nurse involved, her supervisor, and your public relations. Well, as of this time, I don't think I can give you any information at all because she had now has a legal guardian, and you also can't videotape. Oh, I can. Legally, I can. Please. Definitely can. Um, what's your name, ma'am? Let's see here. Actually, I'll just call you. Baby. All right. I just came to find out if the document is even real and if this is really going on right now, you know? Trujillo. She's in room 3224. Okay, Kathleen. This is Aaron. How can I help you? Yes, I was just calling to see how my mom is doing. Kathleen Bennett, Mary J. Trujillo. Okay, I actually can't give any information over the phone unless it's approved by the guardian right now. Okay, so uh, today's her birthday and Christmas, so I won't be able to see her? Correct. Alrighty, thank you so much. I'm sorry. Yep. Oh, okay, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. I think it's probably going to get out there sooner or later, later that Mary went into uh, comfort care yesterday. She went into comfort care? Yeah. And why is that? Because uh, she, she, she's, she's ill. She's ill? She's, she's, she has, but continuing, you know, continuing situations of, uh, I think, a large part of it's the dementia. She's, she's here at the hospital. She'll, she'll, she's, 
she's probably going to remain here in, in uh, I don't know how time she has, but it's very, very limited. What do you mean time? She's Her health is failing right now or what? Yes, her health is failing. Is she dying? Yes. What? Yes. Yeah, my mother is a happy person. She's always joking and everything, even at the camp, you know what I mean? I know, my mother's so depressed, my son said. He's yeah. so depressed and wondering where I'm at, you know? And then my, my son said she's even having a hard time walking now, can you believe that? My mother was working good, because she was laying over there for so long. And she had not one sore on her, and then my son said that she had a sore on her. So that means they weren't turning her or nothing, you know, or getting her up or nothing. And a lady that called me, too, from the Guardian thing, she said she went to see my mom, and my mom was out. Everybody's telling my mom was just sound asleep. You know, marching and medicine, all kinds of stuff. No, I'm hanging in there. Just worried about my mom, you know? There's no one getting hurt. It's a struggle on the daily, but I woke up this morning feeling quite amazing. Let me take it all in as I bathe in the sun and greet the four winds. The early bird gets his hustle on Stretch the wingspan, shake the tail feathers off It's the swamp swan, woodland beast And there's bound to be blood on these woodland teeth Man, I know that I'm loud Backwoods, cloud chasing, no need to turn down Track the scent, now we're hunting like a hound High caliber, no need for two rounds Offerings to honor the earth, keep a blade with me Cause my bread needs butter Thick fall coming from the dab bubbler Fly my block for something more to discover I you wanna test the right man, don't waste your time, man. Studio man, go spend the time.